we're continuing to talk about addition reactions with alkenes. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can turn an alkene into a diol with the help of osmium tetroxide. The oxidation of alkenes to diols with osmium tetroxide is carried out in two steps. In this example, where a cyclopentene is oxidized to a cyclopentadiol, the first step involves osmium tetroxide and pyridine as a solvent, and the second step involves sodium bisulfide or water. And the product of this reaction is a cis diol. The nucleophile in this reaction, as in the previous reactions, is the alkene. The electrophiles are the oxygens that are part of osmium tetroxide. The regiochemistry here does not matter because we are again adding identical substituents across the alkene. The stereochemistry of this reaction is syn. And the mechanism proceeds through a five-membered osmate ester ring. To understand why the stereochemistry proceeds in a syn fashion, we have to look at the mechanism. The reaction begins when the electron density of the alkene attacks one of the oxygen atoms of osmium tetroxide. And simultaneously, the lone pairs on the neighboring oxygen atom attack one of the carbons of the alkene. This results in the formation of a five-membered osmate ring. And if we expose this to water, the water molecule will attack the osmium atom. Then the bond between osmium and the oxygen on our hydrocarbon will break, and the osmium will give up its oxygen to the hydrocarbon. And after some proton exchanges, we're going to get an alcohol on that side. And then to get the second alcohol, another water molecule will attack the osmium, resulting in the cleavage of this bond and the formation of the second alcohol. And notice that the intermediate in this reaction is a constrained five-membered ring, and the oxygens that end up becoming the alcohols are part of that five-membered ring. The resultant diol is a product of syn addition. A few things to note about osmium tetroxide is that it's toxic, volatile, and expensive. So we probably don't want to use this stoichiometrically. And instead, it would be better to use this compound catalytically in this reaction. And in order to do so, we would need to re-oxidize it in situ. And to do that, people often use N-methylmorpholine N-oxide, also known as NMO, to re-oxidize osmium tetroxide in situ and regenerate the osmium compound and use up the NMO sacrificially. Lastly, let's take a closer look at the stereochemistry of this reaction. Recall that the addition happens in a syn fashion. And if the resulting product has a stereocenter, then we're going to get enantiomers. Because the syn addition of the diols could happen from either the top of the alkene or from the bottom of the alkene, with equal probability. So when this oxidation reaction produces stereocenters, then we're going to get a racemic mixture of the products. Make sure that you understand this mechanism before moving on to the next video, where we're going to talk about how to break up alkenes through the process of oxidation.